why don't you just be like everyone else you know in boarding school people used to like kind of make fun in fun of me and, and mock me so that made me now want to be like them and rebel against what i knew was right from within me when the whole spirit was telling me this is not right and i'm mm. like i know it's not right but i gotta do it Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jesse. And I'm Nuru Jacqueline. And this is Walking, Walking with, with the, the Jays. Today we're going to be sharing with you our very own personal salvation stories. Mm -hmm. uh, we will start with like the homes that we grew up in and then go from how we, uh, how we found Christ ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then our walk now as one, uh, as a married couple. Mm -hmm. um, so, Jesse, take it away. <laughs> Tell us the, the home you grew up in. And... Yeah. Okay, so today's going to be a story. So I hope you guys are ready to hear our stories. I grew up in a Christian so my parents, uh, my parents divorced when I was eight years old. Um, and at that time, when I was that young, um, both my parents weren't people like, you know, who'd, you know, go to church. Yes, they would take us to church. Mm. You know, they were very strict. But despite that, you know, they weren't like good or straight with God. Mm -hmm. They still took us to church, um, made sure that I grew up Catholic, by the way, um, I got communion, all those things, the Catholic that we get. Mm. So, and my father was like really strict. Every Sunday, <clears throat> we got to go to church. You got to do this. So, and then, uh, so I, I grew up like that. That that thing, that feeling that I knew that God was real, I had it since I was young, mm. you know, from the teachings of Catholic and growing up, being taught how to pray, um, and then, yeah, when my parents divorced at when I was eight years old, you know, uh, my dad had custody of me first, so I was I stayed with him for a while um, before I started officially staying with my mom. Mm. Um, and and later when I started living with my mom, I remember at that age first I I felt sick. I started I started like fainting. Um, I don't know, maybe it was trauma from my parents' divorce. I don't know, you know, but now looking back at it, I know it was spiritually. So I started like just fainting shortly mm. after my parents uh, divorced. It was like a very intensive sickness. You know, I would be at school. So there was a period also I wasn't going to school because, you know, we, we were scared that my parents were scared that it might occur at school. Mm. It, it used to happen. I'm on the road walking back home from school. I faint. People just pick me up and bring me back home. Um, so, so yeah, it was it was bad. So, so that was also the time that now my parents were di divorced. So my father was doing all that he can to like make sure that I was okay. He was taking me to the doctors. He was taking me to the Catholic people praying for mm -hmm. me. And when I got to my mother, also that was the time that um, my mother was introduced to church um i remember she told the story that my my grandfather uh who who where we grew up now like church wise as kofu eric mom mm -hmm. told mom he, he said he said to mom bring bring nuru to church um let us pray for her mm -hmm. so mom kind of tells this story to people that i was the one who pulled her to mm -hmm. christ it was because of me then she started knowing Jesus personally and gave her life to Jesus. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that is, that is you know, roughly gr growing up, home mm. that we grew up, that's my story. Um, I grew up in a, in a home that knew Christ. Yes, they weren't saved. Um, they weren't born again, but I grew up in that family that we have to go to church, we have to pray, we have to do this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, mine was pretty similar my um my mom and dad were both pretty strict on ha like having to go to church on sunday mm -hmm. and wednesday for mm -hmm. youth 
uh, mm -hmm. youth service. Um, so yeah, uh, that's yeah, it's basically the same. We we were. Uh, God forgive me, but I hated waking up Sunday mornings because I knew I was like, yeah. ah. <laughs> but, <clears throat> but yeah. So we yeah we were raised um, every Sunday go to church, every Wednesday go to church. Um. Yeah. That was yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. So at at what point? Now, growing up, I'm not skipping the whole teenage in 20 years and yeah. all that. At what point did you start getting pulled or wanting, like, being anxious or wanting to know more about Christ or more about God? At what point? And what, how was your walk before you got to that point? Mm. How was your walk? Because I know because of that trauma, most of us will react in two ways. When we get away from our parents because they forced us to go to yeah. church, then we, we become never the go opposite. Back. Yeah, we yeah. never go back. So how was it with you? Um, <clears throat> so much like you, I feel like, and I don't know if I've, I don't think I've ever told you this, but there's, I've been told my whole life there's an anointing on my life. Mm -hmm. um, and... My nanny, my mom, um, a couple family members have always said, you know, that I should be a pastor or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't see it, you know, because I'm not like I'm doing it. I'm not a pastor, mm -hmm. but we're doing it right now. We're ministering. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's what they meant when they said that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Who knows? Um but I think for me, whenever I first, I, start, I, I had a lot of questions growing up because, um, you know, I grew up right in the, right in the middle of, um, I, st I was a teenager whenever uh, the Afghanistan war and Iraqi war was going on. Um, and I had a lot of questions because I would see a lot of, uh, you'd see a lot of, things on TV and you'd see like a bombing happen and, you know, kids crying and, mm -hmm. you know, also nine 11, like how could, you know, how could God let this happen? So mm -hmm. I think that, that pushed me to like really understand, you know, what, what God is all about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm aging myself now, but I was 10 years old when nine 11 happened. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's whenever I started having all these questions like, you know, you know, why would God allow this to happen? And 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 I was quickly educated by my grandma that or by my nanny, as we call her, um, that, you know, God allowed bad things to happen mm -hmm. in the Bible as well. And uh, he allowed a flood to wipe out humanity except for Noah and the animals that he gathered on his ark. Mm -hmm. um, he, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah uh, mm -hmm. because they were not uh, holy people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it just kind of made me realize, like, okay, yeah, bad things will happen, but we must keep our faith. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's got to be something that we hold on to, mm -hmm. something that we... Uh, never let go of. Mm -hmm. So I guess, um, I guess around that time period is whenever I really started becoming more interested in furthering my walk mm -hmm. with with God. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Oh yeah, as we said, some of these things we haven't discussed among ourselves, so we are both learning about some of these mm -hmm. things here. Um, well, for me. Um, I, it, similar, growing up, um, I think a couple people who know me, they already know the story. I was, I'm a miracle child. I was a miracle child. My mom couldn't, was told she couldn't have children after my sister. Mm -hmm. So when she found it, she found it that she was pregnant after like a couple months. Um, so growing up also, um, 
especially when she also started knowing Christ for herself, uh, she started speaking unto me. She said, first of all, my like my history. Um, so when she found out that I was pregnant, uh, you know, she said that this child would bring light. Mm. And also my grandfather spoke and she spoke. By that time, she didn't even know Christ as much, but she, she herself was just like, you know, this child will be, it's kind of like she was speaking anointing on me without yeah. her knowing that she was mm -hmm. doing that. Um, so, and then Jacqueline was given to be my, to me by my sister, uh, Dorcas, and my father as well, because they had that name before <laughs> they, before even they knew that mom couldn't have children any. Mm. So that's how I ended up with Nori Jacqueline. And that's why these days I, um, I, knowing that the, the power in my name, the prophetic power in my name, mm. I try to like, you know, encourage people. Yes, I still introduce myself as Jackie, but I try to encourage people that if you can't say Nuru, please say it because it's prophetic. And if people can't say it, then I say it myself, that I'm Nuru Jacqueline, that I'm, mm. I'm light. But anyway, back to the topic. <laughs> um, so uh, my mom was speaking to me a lot. You know, telling me, and not only me, both her children. She was telling us, especially that time that uh, they got divorced. She was telling, you'd hear her, would sit outside, and she'll be like, my daughters, me and my sister, you and your sister are blessed. You and your sister are this. You and your sister are going to be big. And so I think it's from that also, the anointing that was spoken to me that when I was little, even as when I was like, you know, growing up as a teenage, I never stopped going to church. Mm -hmm. I never hated it. Um, although I was like, I would, I would rebel here and there, but there was something in me that was just like pulling me back. Like, mm. Hey, you know what you're doing is not right. Hey, you know what you, you know? Mm -hmm. and so, um, and I, I remember I had this encounter. I don't know if mom remembers this and I've never told you. Um, but I, I think I was like nine years old or eight years old the same time when they just freshly divorced. Um, my parents had to, because of that divorce, they had to move me from a private school to a public school, you know, now because of finances and everything. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first encounter and no one can change my mind that that day I didn't see an angel. Mm -hmm. I know I saw an angel that day, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was a school and we, you know, like these people who come to like give shows, mm -hmm. you know, like. Uh, po poems and uh, dramas and everything. So there was a group of people who came to school to give that, you know, uh, a show. And, you know, it, it's a public school. It's like, if there's no order. And me, I'm from a private school. You know, a private school is like, order, do that, do that, do that. And I'm like that until today. I'm a person that I, I like order. I like principles. So I thought, you know, Entering the place that those people are giving it the show, it was in a classroom, it, another classroom, you know, we'll be in line and we'll go one after the other. And that was not the case. In that school, public school, it was survival for the fittest. And I think that's how I started learning. Like, okay, <laughs> it is survival for the fittest. So those people, uh, they were in, they were already like preparing, the setting things, everything. And then the teacher was like, okay, now come in. So before I know it, everyone <laughs> was like pushing, like to enter, you know, because people wanted to sit in front and everything. So as I was quizzing myself, you know, I'm not used to that kind of like life. You know, I'm used to kind of like a soft life from private school. People pushed me and I fell down. So I fell down. Everyone was like stepping on me, you know, because there was struggle, like everyone wanted to enter the class. And then... um so i couldn't i found myself down so i had to do that now everyone was struggling and other people fell like a couple people i think it was two or three people more fell on me because we were like now we were stepping on each other <laughs> and then i i couldn't breathe so you know i was struggling to get out of the pile of two more people on top of me and i was tiny you know i'm tiny today but i was tinier that those days mm. so i'm struggling and I, I felt you know like now people are covering you it's dark it's starting to get dark and I don't know how what happened. I just saw a hand, like straight. The hands left those other two people who are on top of me mm. and just came straight to me. And you know, now I was like this, 
looking up, I just saw a hand came came to me and then it pulled me up. Mm. And that day, I trust you, me. No one can change my mind that that was not an angel. <laughs> that was the day because from Noe, that girl, I've never seen her before, you know. After that, I started seeing her. Yes. Mm. But I've never seen her before. I've never even crossed eyes or anywhere. She reached out to me and she pulled out to me. Now, when, when she reached out, when I look at her, it was like really bright. Mm. It was really bright. And that's why I'm like, I had an encounter with an angel. She, she pulled up me and she said, oh, sorry. And then after that, she was like, sorry that you fell. You know, it's let us get you in. So she started holding my hand, pulling, pulling others and pulling like, making sure that I'm behind her so as we enter the class. So that was my first encounter mm. that I, I, I experienced something supernatural. And I remember going back home and I told my mom that I, this is what happened and that was an angel. So from there on, and also adding now on to my sickness, um, mom starting knowing Christ for herself, that opened me to, mm. to now being... Nerd, like anxious, wanting to know more, curious, not not anxious, curious about God. When you hearing about, you know, people when they preached like at church about healing, I would see people getting healed. And mind mm -hmm. you, me, I was the first one to receive Jesus as the uh, savior of my life. Mm. So that's why Mom said that she was pulled to church because of me. Because that day we went to church, and the pastor was like, "If you haven't given your life to Jesus, come." I was very young. I went in front and I gave my life to Christ. I, I was the first one in my family to start speaking in tongues. Mm. And there was another encounter that I started. There was, there was one day at home. Um, now when I started living with my mom, well, one of my sisters, we, you know, we lived a lot of us. So one of my sisters said she had a headache. And she, she was like, I really have a headache. And I was like, let me pray for you. That was shortly after I received Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I put hands on her mm. and I literally prayed for her for this headache to go away. And it went away. She, and she was grown up. She was not like a teenager. No, she was an elderly lady. Mm. And she said, she went and told my mom, I told, Nuru prayed for me and I was healed. So from that, it started to be like, oh, wow, so I can do these things. Yeah. If I do these I things, have I this can. Power. Yeah, I have this anointing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So growing up, even as a teenager, you know, I went here and there, but I still knew that. God is there, and I repented, and I went back to Him. And, yeah, so. yeah. I think <clears throat> I think uh, that's pretty common. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, teenage years, yeah, adolescence, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like for me, the same, you know. Uh, at that time, at ten years old and on, is whenever. Well, I would say probably from 10 to probably 14 or 15 mm -hmm. is whenever I was probably 14. Uh, I was like, you know, I want to know more about this. And like, just without lack of a better term, religiously went to church mm -hmm. and just like really paid attention to the sermons and the verses that they were speaking on and, and everything that... Um, that the people above me were speaking about and, mm -hmm. and talking about and all that. Um, and then afterwards, uh, teenage years happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it happens, but as long as we find our way back to Christ. So when did you find your way back to Christ? At, at which, at what age? I would say at 15 is whenever I like really, really went astray probably. Mm -hmm. um, and then here until recently, like mm -hmm. 20, maybe 28, 29 mm -hmm. is whenever I found my way back and was like, okay, mm -hmm. this is, the way that I'm going to live for the rest of my life. This is what I'm submitting to. I'm submitting my life to, to God and mm -hmm. to Jesus. And, mm -hmm. and the person that I marry will be the same. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I made that covenant with myself and, and with God that, you know, that from here on out, I will sing his praises. I will glorify his name. You know, his name is, is so much greater than mine. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and my wife and my family will do the same. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, uh, for me, I pretty much the same. Teenage year. For me, I, was, I, I, I can't say I left God. I never, I never, you know, I, I never left him, but let, maybe a proper term to say. I wasn't that, living for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's for me, that's what it was for me. Me, I was a lukewarm Christian. Yeah. I still, because mind you, I started speaking in tongues when I was really young. So I knew that speaking in tongues, you know, I think it even reached a point I was, you know, getting used to that. So I had my own language. So, but I was a lukewarm Christian. And, and I still had this urge in me to like live right. And whenever sometimes I used to make decisions, now growing up, you know, my teenage, when I started uh, actually like 20s, when I started uh, dating, you know, there'll be something that in me telling me that Jackie, this is not right. Jackie, this is not the right person. Yeah. Jackie, this is not. And I'll be like, you know, trying to like, I, I wanted to fit in. That's the problem with me. Like the that was the problem. That's not the problem with me anymore these days. Mm -hmm. The problem with me then was that I wanted to fit in. So I was like, everyone has a boyfriend. Why should I not? Everyone is doing this. Why, why can it not be me? Although the Holy Spirit in me was telling me no yeah. i i rebelled so i was we were a getting convic convictions mm. from <laughs> wanting to be like the world yeah yeah because yeah, i didn't want to be the odd person you know because <clears throat> there have been some incidences here and there with friends that are telling me ah you too you're you you think you're too holy oh you think you're this so those i started being like oh maybe it's it's a bad thing why don't you just be like everyone else you know, in boarding school, people used to like kind of make fun in fun of me and, and mock me. So that made me now want to be like them and rebel against what I knew was right from within me when the Holy Spirit was telling me this is not right. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I know it's not right, but I got to do it. Mm -hmm. Literally, that's what I used to do. So I was a lukewarm Christian. But then um, in 20, I would say from 2018, I started, I was like, no, 2018, 20, end of 2018, 2019, I started, I really had this conviction that Jackie, no, this is not the way, mm -hmm. you know, you got to get back to God. What if <clears throat> Jesus comes back now? Yeah. Are you going to go to heaven? You know, I used to be that person that people were drawn to me. They would want to, I would encourage people, I would, you know, still pray for people, even as a lukewarm Christian, still do, still do this. But then that day I just asked myself, I was like, if Jesus comes back now, mm. are you going to go to heaven? Or are you going to be that person that um, the, there's a word that says the first will be the last and the last will be the first. I didn't want to be the person who helped go to heaven, like preach to them, pray to them, encourage mm -hmm. them. And me, myself, I don't see heaven. Yeah. So that was the point. 2018, I started, I put my foot down and I was like, no, I'm going to start living right for the Lord. Yes, of course, I still met, you know, hiccups here and there. Um, but it's all part of the walk. Yeah. And, but I, I strived and, you know, I, I went back to God. I repented. I pray. I, I started being more intentional mm. that yes, I'm not perfect because we're all not perfect. Even as we're sharing this, it's not mm -hmm. that we're perfect. We're not perfect. There's things that we still struggle, but if it's that intention, not like the intentionality, mm. right. That we, we strive, like we fall, we get back to God mm -hmm. and we strive not to do what we did again. So for me, it was like from that time, 2018, 2019, I started really seeking God for myself, praying, fasting. And it was in 2020, I believe, that I was led to pray for my husband. And I started writing, um, story for another day, but I wrote the qualities that I wanted in a husband. And at that time, because, you know, I, I came from, not a very good relationship. So I was really intentional mm -hmm. about the partner that I wanted to end up with. So I wrote down and I said, God, I submit, I dedicate myself to you until your time comes. 
this is the person that I want and that will help me, help me God not to go back, not to live a lukewarm life, Christianity life. So, and then, yeah, so we met and yeah, and I'm glad that we met. <clears throat> we both love God. We are both in the journey of um, mm. knowing Christ, um, you know, just striving to serve God. And one of our goals that's why we're sharing this because one of our goals we were well, to for God to use us mm-hmm. to use us for uh, for his kingdom for you guys for anyone who's watching this to see that you can you can meet the right person and you can serve God with your partner mm-hmm. that don't be discouraged if you're going through hiccups down in you know no one is perfect even the big uh, preachers that we see, motivational Christian speakers that we see, they still go through things. Mm-hmm. So for us, our prayer and our goal is for putting our lives out there. We are the living sacrifice because we tell each other that we are the beginning of a new generation. Mm-hmm. Yes, our parents spoke words onto us. They, they, we had anointing from when we were young. They spoke those blessings onto us. But if we don't work towards becoming those blessings, then nothing will happen. We'll just be like words. So yeah, we yeah. You have to put action to the to the anointing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so those are that's our salvation story, um, stories. I mean, because we had different <laughs> stories. We didn't know each other when we were young, but it seems like our stories were kind of similar. You know, yeah. your parents were speaking anointing onto you mm-hmm. and. My parent, my mom mostly was also doing the same. We hope that you will be blessed by our testimonies because this is our story, as, but it's as well as our testimony. Mm-hmm. Um, I've mentioned there that I was, a, I was a sickly child growing up, but look at me now. I'm healed. You know, even my birth story, it was mm. my mom were told, was told that she couldn't have a child anymore after my sister. And then fast forward seven years, I happened. Mm. So that too shows that kind of like how my mom used to tell me I was a special child. So she was like, don't, when people make fun of you, when they say, don't, you're a special child. It took longer. She used to like marinate me with this word, like if God was preparing you, <laughs> like he, he was marinating you to be, that's, that's how special you are. So mm. yeah, do you have anything to add? No, uh, I mean, yeah, it, sound, it sounds like our story is pretty similar, mm-hmm. yeah, but um, but our walks in themselves have been different, mm-hmm. yeah, and just yeah. like everybody else's, mm-hmm. so you may have the same story, mm-hmm. but it's not the same, mm-hmm. it's not the same walk, yeah, and and that's why we should show grace mm-hmm. and um, be kind to everybody, yeah. Said it in the last video. You yeah. Know, be always be kind. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's something that we should just say in every video. Be yeah. kind to people. Yeah. Be kind you never to, know. Yeah. You never know. You will be a story in you'll be a, a character in someone else's mm-hmm. salvation story yeah. by being kind. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are here. We are saved because someone was kind to us. Mm. Someone poured the word of, of God onto us. So you know, we are pouring it onto you too. We're encouraging you. We're sharing our stories so as you would be encouraged. If you're someone who does not know Christ as mm-hmm. at all, then know that Jesus loves you. Yeah. No matter what you're passing through. Mm-hmm. Both of us have been there. We have done that. Mm-hmm. No one in this world does not have a story. No one was born a preacher. No one was born a pastor. No one was born. We all ha- we all came from somewhere. Yeah. So if there's someone who's watching this and you're self-condemning yourself that you're not worth it, that mm. you're not loved, that God doesn't love you, we were once where you are. Yeah. And we are here telling you that God loves you. Just give him a chance. That still little voice that speaks to you inside of you, listen to that still little voice and give that voice a chance. Mm. That is God speaking to you. Give God a chance. And know that you're loved, you're worth it, and <clears throat> and that's why we're here. So if you ever need prayers, you know, we're still, that's why we named our channel Walking with the Jays. 
if you ever need prayers you can just comment down below for a prayer mm -hmm. anything and we'll pray together we'll pray for you and must be the holy spirit because that's what i was actually about to say you know mm -hmm. our channel is not just for the ones that are saved mm -hmm. or yeah um you know, it's not just for people that are already walking in Christ. This mm -hmm. is for people that don't even know Jesus, mm -hmm. that don't know mm -hmm. the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's why we're here to tell our stories mm -hmm. so um so we can just share the goodness of God and mm -hmm. like um <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. I had that weird feeling like, wow, yeah. I, what you were saying is what I was about to say. Yeah. So. yeah. But yeah. Um, so if you're watching this and you need prayers, reach us, reach out to us. You can comment or you can send us a DM on our Instagram pages and we'll pray together. We'll pray for you. We'll pray together. We're not too perfect when it comes to prayer. We're praying how yeah. we are led with the Holy yeah. Spirit. And we don't know why we've, we've mentioned it. Maybe there is someone who is watching it now who will watch it in a couple of years. They will need prayers, feel encouraged, feel blessed, feel strengthened, know that you're not by yourself. And for yeah. someone who's already good in, in with the work of Christ, walking with Christ, they already know Christ for themselves, then don't give up. Mm -hmm. Strive to, you know live a holy life because god calls us to live a holy life mm -hmm. and be a blessing to someone else who you who are a christian be a blessing to someone else yeah. pray for people encourage people be kind to people because god said the the harvest is many but the laborers are few. yeah are few so for a christian who's watching this know that you're a laborer mm -hmm. so you have an assignment when you're saved your salvation story that means you're supposed to also preach to other person so as they too they can have a salvation story mm -hmm. you have an assignment to bring a soul to christ yeah. cool. so serve god you christian who you're watching don't give up also don't condemn yourself when you fall down don't think now you're not worth it no go back to god repent and strive not to do repeat that and live a holy life and for someone who's watching doesn't know christ at all jesus loves you mm. you are worth it mm -hmm. and if you ever need any prayer, any help. There's so many Christian resources out there. But mm -hmm. if you feel, if you're pushed towards us, then we have our Instagram pages, uh, Walking with the Jays and uh, YouTube. I don't know if mm -hmm. YouTube has um, has what? You can send us a message directly. I don't know. Just comment. Probably. Yeah, just comment that, hey, I need prayers. And we'll reach out to you through yeah. different ways. And yeah. For the glory of God, so as we can, at the end of the day, we all see each other in heaven mm -hmm. and we rejoice and we will receive that, uh, what is it called? A crown and mm -hmm. God congratulating us that well done, my faithful servant. servant. So mm -hmm. that is our stories and that is our goal of, our, of this channel and mm -hmm. as to why we're sharing this story. And I can't remember the Bible verse, but it says... He that wins souls is wise. So, yeah. be wise. Be wise. Our <laughs> fellow Christians, be wise. Represent God with your words, your thoughts, and your actions, with your way of living each and every day. And if you're a soul that needs winning, come to, come to know God, mm -hmm. and you will also be wise. Mm -hmm. Start seeking God for yourself, little by little. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, I am pushed to pray. So, mm -hmm. ending this, let us pray together. <laughs> Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. we thank you, God, for this time. Thank you for speaking through us, Father God, and speaking to us. We're praying that the salvation stories that we shared with people today, that will be, there will be a blessing to someone out there who's struggling. There will be a blessing someone there who has questions father god and there will be the, a beginning to bring this person who's watching from the other side of the screen to pull them closer and closer to to you father god yes. in the mighty name of jesus Amen. may you bless the person who's watching this may you need may you meet the needs of the, the the needs of this person father god if it's a healing miracle breakthrough father god anything that they're seeking you for father god 
peace. May you fill their lives and their hearts with your peace. May you provide for this person who is watching. May you fill this person with the assurance that you love them and that they are worth it, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We curse, bind, and rebuke all the tricks, all the attacks of the enemy against yeah. our sister or brother who's watching this. We cover them with the blood of Jesus right now. And we pray as we're praying, Father God, may your presence and your spirit fill them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That they will feel loved, they will feel worth it, yes. they will feel healed, they will feel the healing coming into them, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God, we say thank you for each and every everything thank you for using us as your vessels father god and we pray that you continue to use us for the glory of your name yes. in the mighty name of jesus Amen. we give you all the praise we, be, we give you all the honor and all the glory in the mighty name of jesus we have prayed amen 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 amen, amen. thank you for stopping by and watching yeah we love you guys until next time we'll see you peace out <laughs>